In this video, we are going to be talking about how to classify triangles by their sides and angles, and then also talking about problems that are going to be involving the interior and exterior angles of a triangle. So just a couple quick vocab terms here. A triangle, obviously a polygon with three sides. Okay, so triangle has three sides, hence tri. You label a triangle's vertices with capital letters because they're points. So you've got vertex A, vertex B, vertex C, all labeled with capital letters. And then the way that you name a triangle is you draw a little triangle out front and then name the three vertices. These vertices can be in any order. So this could also be triangle C, A, B, whatever order you pick. Interior angles are just the angles inside of the triangle. Exterior angles are basically outside angles. If you extend the side of the triangle, they're the one that makes a linear pair with the inside. Okay, so this one, the linear pair with it is its exterior angle. Then we're also going to talk about classifying triangles by their sides and angles. So every triangle has two classifications, one by the sides and one by the angles. So for sides, if there are no congruent sides, every number here is different, every length here is different, then it's considered scalene. If it has at least two sides that are congruent, so you see, you remember that the tick marks mean that the sides are equal in length, this is considered isosceles. If all three sides are congruent, it is called equilateral. I, an equilateral triangle is also isosceles because it says at least. At least means either two or three sides congruent. If you see all three sides congruent, the, the most specific name for that is equilateral. Classifying by its angles, uh, an acute triangle has all three of its angles being less than 90 degrees. Okay, so all three of these are acute angles. Now, in a right triangle, you only have one angle that's a right angle, and then the other two are acute. So it's, you'll see one right angle marked with the box. Obtuse has one angle that is bigger than one, um, bigger than 90 degrees. Okay, so one obtuse angle. So you'll see one large angle, and then the two small angles. And then an equiangular triangle has all three angles congruent. We're gonna get into dealing with the interior and exterior angles. So here's a couple of theorems about them that you probably remember from middle school. The sum of the measure of the interior angles is 180. So that means if you take all of these interior angles and you add them up, they will equal 180 degrees. You gotta have all three angles, not two of them. Okay, all three of them total 180. For an exterior angle, okay, an exterior angle, so this angle out here, okay, so angle one. So you see angle one is right next to angle C, angle B, C, A in the triangle. So those two are a linear pair. Those two together total 180. This exterior angle here, this yellow one, is actually then also equal to the sum of these two. So if you take the green and the blue and add them together, you'll get the yellow. It will equal the yellow. Okay, so the exterior angle equals the sum of the two interior angles that it's not touching. Okay, the other two. Let's take a look at a couple examples here. So let's just classify these triangles based on sides and angles. So we're, you, we're gonna have two classifications, one based on the sides, one based on the angles. So um, let's do angle classification first. So if we take a look at the angles, so look at the angles, you have a 45, a 90, and a 45. So since you see a 90 degree angle, this is a right triangle. Then we're gonna look at the sides to see if any of the sides are the same. So we see 7.99, 5.65, and 5.65. So we end up with two sides that are congruent. Okay, so two sides that have the same measurement. So this makes it isosceles. 
So we have a right isosceles triangle. Next one, again, look at the angles. So you see 50, 50, 80, all of those are less than 90. So we have an acute triangle. Then take a look at the sides. See if you see any that are the same. And we do this 4.47. So this one is gonna be isosceles as well. Okay, then take a look at these bottom ones. So looking at the angles, we see 60, 60, 60. So all of them are, are the same. And they're angles. So this is equiangular. Then take a look at the sides. 5.82, 5.82, 5.82. So th this is also equilateral. Now this happens in triangles that they are always equilateral and equiangular at the same time. So if you see it and it's equiangular, you automatically know it's equilateral. And if it's equilateral, you also know it's equiangular. Next one, 45, 90, 45. So we get a right triangle. And then looking at the sides, 4.5 and 4.5 are the same. So we have isosceles. Then let's take a look at doing some problems. So we learned about interior angles and exterior angles. So what you wanna do is decide, do you see interior angles or do you see exterior angles? And what we see in this one is interior angles. So let's remember what the interior angle sum is. Okay, and the interior angle sum is that all three of these angles add up to 180 degrees. So we can just plug in the angles, make sure you have three of them. So we have X, 108, and 29. So then we'll just add 108 and 29, whoops, 108 and 29 together. So you get X plus 137 is equal to 180. Subtract 137 from both sides and you'll get X equals 43. Then you can also have ones that don't just have numbers in it. You like don't just know the angle measure. You actually have an expression here too. Um, so again, these are all interior angles. So we need to have three angles that we add together. So looking at these angles, I see 4x plus 7 and 39. And then a lot of people miss this one because there's not a number written here. But remember that this box means 90. So you have to have all three angles in there to total 180. So combine your like terms. Um, 7 plus 39 is 46. 46 plus 90 is 136. So we get um, the 4x plus 136 equals 180. Subtract 136 from both sides. So you end up with 4x equals 44. Divide by 4 and you get x equals 11. Make sure that this problem wanted didn't want anything more from you, and this one only wanted you to solve for x, so then you'd be done. This one just gives you the triangle, but it doesn't, it, it tells you the triangle's name, but it doesn't give you the picture. So feel free to draw a picture, okay? Sometimes that's helpful. And you can just draw the triangle however you want, label it however you want, H, I, J, and then you can look here and it gives you the expressions. So you can write those all in here. We've got one for H, one for I, and one for J. Those are interior angles. So we already know what the formula is, whether we draw the picture for this one or not. We know that these three angles, interior angles, total 180. So then we can just plug them in. So we have H, I, and J. Combine your like terms. So you have an 8x, a 2x, and a 1x. 
So 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 1 is 11 x's. You've got negative 6, negative 4, and negative 8. So negative 6 plus negative 4 is negative 10, plus negative 8 is negative 18. Add 18 to both sides. So you get 11x equals 198. Then you'll divide by 11 to both sides. And you'll get x equals 18. And then this problem, okay, wants us to find the measure of angle H. So now we have to take this and plug it back in. So the measure of angle H is equal to 8 times x minus 6. And now we know that x is 18, so we can plug it in. So then do 8 times 18. And you get 144 minus 6. So the measure of angle H is 138 meaning it's an obtuse triangle. So that picture isn't drawn to scale. This would be a much bigger angle here. Okay, looking at this one, I see it's a little bit different. I see an exterior angle now. Okay, so now remember when you had exterior angles, you had the exterior angle equals the sum of the two interior angles that it's not touching. Okay, so this interior angle equals the sum of the two angles it's not touching. It's touching this one, so it's the sum of these two. Okay, so 140 is going to equal those two angles added together. One of the angles is 90, the other one we're calling x. So we can subtract 90 from both sides and get 50 equals x. This next one has an exterior angle, but it's actually a linear pair because this variable is right next to it. So we don't need to use our new information on this one. We just see a linear pair here, and we remember that a linear pair is um, add the two angles together, and they'll equal 180. So then you can just subtract 72 from both sides, and you get x equals 108.